Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today's lesson will be diving deep into QuickBooks Online, and we're specifically talking about the newer functionality within QuickBooks Online to track your projects, okay? So there's some really cool features, and uh, they're pretty much not too well understood yet because it's a kind of new, right, within QuickBooks. So I'm gonna talk through that and I'm going to discuss how we can apply this functionality to both a flipping business as well as a construction business, so a residential remodeling business. And um, you can kind of do both within the same set of books. We're gonna talk through that today. So a few things. First, to make use of the projects functionality, you must have QuickBooks Online Plus or Advanced, okay? So you're not gonna have this functionality in any of the versions prior to that. All right, the second thing is that our methodology for tracking property specific expenses, we need to be using customers instead of classes, okay? So that's kind of a debate that we've had um, over the last few years here. And to make use of this project's func functionality, you're gonna need customers to be what decides how you track by property, okay? So those are the first two things to get out of the way. And then let's get into QuickBooks here and discuss this, this cool new functionality. So again, assuming that we have our customers set up as our properties, okay? So you can see here I have a few properties set up as customers. I can then create projects for them, okay? And if I go into my customer, you'll see that on the projects tab, it'll show me any projects that I have. I happen to have one called 123 Main Street Renovation that's set up and ready to use. <clears throat> so what is the Projects tab? So I can click into this here, but let's go over here to the drawer and click Projects. So what QuickBooks is doing with projects, it's giving you not just the financials of a project, but it's also giving you progress reporting as well as just like a better visual of the whole thing. All right, so if I click into my project here, 123 Main Street Renovation, you can see that it gives you a really simple breakdown of income, costs, and profit. Now, these are all numbers that you can get from a profit and loss statement with the right filters applied, but this gives you like one standalone portal to come to for all of the project's information. I'm gonna click the drawer here to kind of make this bigger. All right, so in this, this cool thing here, like if I'm in all projects, It'll show me my, my income and costs for all of them at the same time. All right, so let's go into this renovation and start adding information to see how this whole thing works. Now, the simplest way to understand this is like your general costs. So when you go to the store and you're buying materials, for example. So let's log some of those so that those can show up here in um, my cost of goods sold, okay? So if I go into an expense, so let's again envision that I'm going to the store and I'm maybe going to Lowe's, all right? And I'm spending money from my checking account and it's for re rehab costs. And I could say this is for drywall, all right? And it's maybe for 52.50. It's for the one, two, three Main Street renovation, okay? Now you can, of course, also use products and services. Now my products and services are currently all lined up to be going toward fixed asset as opposed to expenses. And we can adjust that in a second. All right, so I'm gonna click save and close just so we can see how that works. Okay, so you can see that that cost hits here. Now I have a negative profit of 52.50, my rehab costs. I always like to have costs associated with a specific project to show up as cost of goods sold as opposed to expenses. I treat my expenses as anything that's general business, more overhead, okay? That's how I like to set that up. All right, now let's um, do one other thing. I mentioned products and services. I am gonna go to my products and services list and I'm gonna grab a few of these. If you haven't seen my videos on using products and services and accounting codes to give you, yourself a little bit more visibility as to where you're spending money, certainly check that out. Um, it's, a really cool, it's a really cool thing. So let me see, I don't think I can batch all these. No, I can't. <clears throat> but I'm gonna grab um, Rough Electrical. I'm gonna edit this service. And right now, I do have it going to cost good sold, so I think I should be good. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go back to my projects 
I'm gonna, what, what I love about QuickBooks too is they're making everything you're able to drill down into it. So I can go into here, and I can see my rehab expenses. <clears throat> and you'll notice that I have some previous stuff that I was experimenting with that zeroed out, but let me just grab this one. And instead of putting it here, okay, that was for drywall, right? So instead of putting it there, let's move instead to interior, sheetrock and interior paint, 5250. And I'll put it there. All right, and so what that does for me is if I click into my rehab costs, it gives me the ability to group by product or service and I can see those items that show up there. Okay, so that's really, really helpful. So now let's also talk about your hourly time cost. Okay, so if you're a rehabber and you have employees, you should certainly be attributing their time to the cost within your project. A lot of us, and I know I did this when I was um, new to flipping, is I kind of ignored those costs, especially my own cost, okay? But you have to understand that your time is valuable, right? So if you're using it on your rehab, you should be calculating that. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so first thing is you're gonna to need to add your employees to QuickBooks. Even if you're not doing payroll out of QuickBooks, you can still add your employees, okay? So add yourself for sure, especially if you're doing any work on the projects, and then anybody else that is doing work for you that is employed by you. You can also add contractors, okay? So let's just say I have myself right now. I'm gonna flip this house by myself. So let's go into projects. And the first thing to set up here is hourly cost rate. Or if you click into here, it's gonna give you a list of your employees and you're gonna add the cost rate. You can click this add button. And so what is the cost rate? This is the rate that when you log time, it's going to default as your cost so that it can be accounted for in your profit and loss. If I were to add time to this renovation right now, okay, so I can click in here to add hours, it's gonna bring up a time activity. It's going to zero out uh, my cost rate, okay? Because it doesn't know how much I'm worth, right? So if I set this up, the right way, hourly cost rate, and click add, I can put in my cost rate. And what I love about QuickBooks is it's getting really smart. It's adding like this calculator feature. If I click this, I can say, okay, well, what do I pay this person? Maybe myself, right? So $20 an hour base pay, and then it's reminding you, don't forget about the fact that when you pay your employees, say $20 an hour, you also gotta pay a bunch of taxes, workers comp, overhead. So your actual cost of that employee is higher than what you actually pay them in wages. Okay, so I can add in a few other costs here. Workers comp, I can do at like 340, like 17% and then maybe an extra dollar for overhead. And you can see there my cost rate is 25.93. And I might want to make this even, like round it up, just so it's a little bit easier to estimate. Okay, and I can click add there and click done. Oops, I need to save it first, so save right there, and then click done. Okay, so now, if I were to add time, so let's say that I'm working on, I bought the drywall material and then I worked on it, right? So I can do a single time activity, okay? And it populates my cost rate. Perfect, right? Turn off billable for now. And I can enter a start time and an end time. And save and close. And so what's gonna happen is my time starts to be counted as a cost, which is exactly what I want, okay? Now you could also do a time sheet, a weekly time sheet. All right, and this is kind of a faster way to do it, where you have the employee and then you have a week and then you indicate the customer project. Okay, and it's got my cost rate in there, which is great. And we could call this demo. Okay, so I spent eight hours that day, then another four hours this day. And then another line item, I maybe did framing, four hours there, and another eight hours there, okay? And I can save and close. 
you can see my cost is up updating. All right. Now let's just take a side step and let's say that you're doing this now for your residential remodeling business. Well, you're going to have your invoices here. Now, if you're flipping, you're not going to really have invoices, but you're going to have a transaction kind of at the end that says, here's your realized gain. But of course, if you are, if you're doing uh, residential remodeling, you're going to have invoices. Okay. So maybe you are, you have an invoice. <clears throat> I need some kind of service here. Maybe it's a $10,000 price tag. I'm not gonna send it, so I don't need to do that. And it's going to update your income, your costs are here, and it gives you your profit, your profit margin shows up as well. Now you might've seen on the side drawer there that billable costs, and let me show you what that is. Let's say that all of this time or at least some of this time, maybe like this framing was billable, meaning that I want to charge my customer for this time, okay? What's super cool about QuickBooks is its ability to take in billable costs. So if my cost rate is 26, maybe I bill my customer $35 an hour for this. All right, if I did that, if I click save and close on that, all right, here I am now in my, in my setup. Okay, so I have my invoices and my costs. What if I took that invoice that I sent to my customer and I added in my billables? If I click this arrow here, you're gonna see that 280 comes through. I can click the add button and it'll bring in my hours to my invoice. And if I save and close it there, I'm now being paid for that time that I wanted to mark as billable. So now my total income is 10,280 minus my cost of 6,084, okay? Super helpful to do that, right? And prior to this, QuickBooks didn't have a way of tracking um, projects like this. What I love is I can easily get into my transactions. I can get into my time activity. I like being able to sort my time activity by week to kind of see like where were my guys? What was going on, right? Group by employee or service, that's another reason to have uh, products and services set up. Okay, so um, now I don't have my products and services set up in my timesheets yet, but I will. And then, of course, you have your project reports. Okay, so these are automatically generated reports that work for your project. Okay, time cost by employee. And then, one that I really like is unbilled time. So when you're tracking billable time, and you haven't yet invoiced for it, I like to bring that up as well, okay? So this projects portal, as I was mentioning, is something completely new, okay? So it's only been around for like a year or less. So they're continuously testing it out and adding new features, which is really exciting. When I'm done with the project, I'm just gonna click here and mark it as completed, right? And I can see on my projects portal, it'll filter out only those that are currently active, okay? So I definitely recommend that you spend some time with projects. And if you've already set up your QuickBooks to be tracked by classes, or you're just by customers and subcustomers, that's okay. I would just start fresh from now on, okay? There's no reason that you can't do that, especially maybe from the new year 2020, okay? Um, because it just gives you a lot more visibility into the financials of that project. And there's some cool features that I think are worthwhile to take advantage of, okay? Let me know if you have any questions. What's your scenario that you're trying to use projects? Put it in the comments here. If you have questions on how it applies to your business, I'd be happy to address them directly in the comments or with a video itself, all right? And we'll see you guys on the next video lesson.